In the last presentation, we completed the introduction of the signals and I also gave you one example in which we were at the temperature from 9 a.m. in the morning to the 9 p.m. at the night. I also told you in electrical and electronics, the signal is nothing special but the change in the current and voltage with time. So in this presentation, we will move forward with our signals and we will see what is an analog signal. Before actually going to the actual idea, let me first tell you the difference between the analog clock and the digital clock. Why we call this analog and why we call this digital. So let me write it down. This one is the analog clock and this one is digital clock. So let's first talk about this analog clock. In this you can see we have three hands. The first one, this one is the hour hand, this one is the minute hand and the small one is the seconds hand. So we can say that this analog clock or this clock can have the time as hour, then minute and then second. So it can take any value in 24 hours. Now let's see what happens in the case of digital clock. This one represents hour and this one represents the minute but there is a no second in this case once we have 60 seconds passed this 12 will change to and we have 13 we cannot see what is going in between this 12 and 13 because it is not allowed in the digital clock either we have 11 12 13 14 15 not 11 minutes and 10 seconds it is not allowed that's why this is digital because in digital we have certain levels like this let's say this is 11 minute 12 minute 13 and then 14 either you will be on 11 or 12 or 13 or 14 you cannot be in between 11 or 12 like this is 11 minutes and 30 seconds you cannot have the value equal to 11 minutes and 30 seconds because second is not allowed this level this intermediate level is not allowed in digital clock on the other hand in analog clock we can have 11 minutes and 30 seconds definitely that's why we call it analog because it is analogous to the time we, we have every values in the given limit so this is a small thing which will help you to understand the analog and digital signals now let's move to the actual thing here you can see t max t max is the maximum temperature and let's say this plot or this graph is for the temperature and uh, we are measuring the temperature from the first of the month and this one is for the last day of the month that is 31st and we are measuring the temperature like this let's say without for any reason like uh, rain or something we have the temperature uh, lower from the 16th of the month so this is the plot and we can see that this particular plot is analogous this one is analog why this is analog because you can see that each and every value is possible from 0 to t max the temperature in let's say degree celsius we can have any value like this one is 27 degree celsius and we can have 27.8 degree celsius in the same way we can have 27.88 degree celsius and um, all the intermediate values is allowed and let's say t max is 47 degree celsius so from 0 degree celsius we can have any value between the 47 degree celsius so this one is analog because it can take any value within the given limit so analog signal is the signal which can take any value within the given limit now as we are talking about the digital electronics let's change this t max by the v max this t max is v max v max is my voltage and this is zero volt and this is v volt that is the maximum voltage and let's say v max is 20 volts so it can take any value between 0 and 20 volts because it is an analog signal now we can move to the next type of signal that is the discrete time signal so let's study what is a discrete time 
signal because it is important to understand this signal before we move to the digital signals so let's see what is the discrete time signal the signal which is defined for the discrete interval of time is called as the discrete time signal so I will write this thing down so that you can have a better or proper definition of the discrete time signal the signal which is defined the signal which is defined which is defined for the discrete intervals of time is called as the discrete time signal now let's understand it with the help of this graph before that I will clear some space so that we can understand it easily okay I will copy this down and then we can analyze it so let's copy and then paste I will drag it down and now we can analyze it in discrete time signal the time axis that is my x-axis is discretized by discretized I mean let's say we are measuring the temperature on 11 o'clock daily so this is the 11 o'clock of the first day then this is for the second day and this is for the last day and this one is for the second last day these are for the different days and all are on the 11 a m so what between the 11 a m of the first day and the 11 a.m. 11 a.m. of the second day we don't know we don't know what is the temperature between the 11 a.m. of the first day and the 11 a.m. of the second day so this definition this value of the temperature is not available to us so we have to remove it so let's rub it down okay in the same way we don't have the value of the temperature between the 11 a.m. of the last day and the second last day and the same thing will be applicable for the other days of the month so this is how a discrete time signal looks we have discretized the time axis this is not proper but you can draw it proper and in the same way we have to eliminate this portions also now this one is the discrete time signal we have the definition of the function in this case it is the temperature for the discrete time values let's say this is t1 this one is t0 t2 all the way to tn so we have the value of the function at t0 then t1 t2 all the way to tn the value of the function we have for this times only what is between t0 and t1 we don't know because we have not monitored the function for that particular time so this is what a discrete time signal looks and uh, you have to know one thing that the signal is actually analog the change is definitely analog but we have not monitored this particular sections so we have a discrete time signal and the discrete time signal is the subset of subset of analog signal analog signal so this is an important thing to know and all real life signals are analog signal and I think this is all we are already pushing the time and we have learned two things the first one is the analog signal and the second one is discrete time signal